In this video, we'll have a look at another way of converting explicitly from one data type to another in SQL Server. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. So in the previous video, we had a look at the cast function. So the cast function allows us to convert from one type, so in this case, a string type, a varchar type, to another. So in this case, a number type, an int. So you can see that it converts the number three from a string to an int. So why is this important? Well, its strings get converted into numbers in implicit conversion. So adding three to the string three would result in the number six because the string gets converted to a number. However, if I change it so that it is trying to convert something that can't be converted, then you get an error. So what I would say is, okay, I want the number three to be converted into a string. So I'll put a cast around it and I would say I want that converted to a varchar, for instance, and use the format, your expression, the word as, and then the data type. So that is the cast function. So if that's a cast function, what function are we going to be focusing on in this video? We're going to have a look at the convert function. So the convert function works fairly similarly, except we don't use the as, and we put the data type first, and then a comma. So here we've got convert into a varchar, the number three. So again, here we've got convert into an int, the string three. And here we've got convert this into a date. So we'll put the word date at the beginning. We'll have the word convert. And there we go, it converts. So, so far it's identical to the cast in terms of functionality, except we put the data type first. Now, just like cast, convert also has a try version. So the try version results in exactly the same thing if it does convert it. If it doesn't convert it, then the convert function comes with an error. So for instance, let's change the word April to Abril, the Spanish version. I'm in the American locale. So you can see we get an error message when we try to convert that. If I put try convert, then instead of the error message, we get a null. So when I use convert, I generally use try underscore convert, unless there's a particular reason for me. For instance, I do want an error to occur if there is something that is wrong, or I know that everything is going to be right, or I'm writing code that I want to port into, say, Oracle SQL. Okay, so it seems almost identical to cast. So what's the big deal? Well, the big deal happens when we're converting dates into strings. So let's have a declaration of a variable. So I'm creating a variable called my date. It's going to be a date time and it's going to hold the 2nd of April, 2025 at round about half past one in the morning. So if I was to just select that, you'll see that it gives it to me as a date time. Now, suppose I wanted to convert that into a string. Why would I want to do that? Well, I could say the date is and have my date time. And you can see conversion failed. It's not happy to do it as an implicit conversion. I need to do it as an explicit conversion. Well, I could use cast. So I could say cast this as a varchar 30, for instance, and that would work. However, I've got no control whatsoever about the output. It outputs as this April or April, and then two spaces, and then number two, why two spaces? Because there is a blank space for a leading zero. So if I said 11, it would just be one space in 11. And then we have the year and then two spaces for the same reason and one call on 23 AM. We don't have the number of seconds. So if I use convert like this, then we have exactly the same thing. However, there is a third optional argument we can use with convert. 
So I could say comma one. So this is something that you use with date times, dates. And if I execute that, you can now see that it has been converted into the American format, April the 2nd, 2025. If I wanted four digits, then instead of using one, I just add a hundred to it. So it now becomes four to 2025. Okay, so what else can we use? Well, let's start with zero. So zero will give me this, which is the default. Same as we've had before. One gives us the American version. Two gives us the ANSI version. So year, year, dot, month, month, dot, DD, date, date. Again, I could use 102 if I wanted four digits. Let's look at three. Well, this gives it in the British or French version, date slash month slash year. 104 gives it to me in the German version. So same order of the dates, the numbers, but in this case, we have a dot rather than the slashes. Five, well, that's the Italian version. It uses hyphens. And we continue with six and seven. Eight just gives me the time. Nine gives me the standard, but we can have milliseconds as well. Ten, we're back to the American standard, but with hyphens. Eleven, we're back to the Japanese standard, or the ANSI standard, but we're using slashes. Twelve, this is the ISO version, so nothing in between. Thirteen, it gives me the European default, with milliseconds. And 14 just gives me the time. So there are a few more that I could use. So 20 or 120, that gives me what's called the OBDBC canonical, uh, canonical. And 21 gives it me with milliseconds. As you can see, 122 doesn't work, but 22 gives me the American version with AM and PM at the end. 23. That gives me year, month, day. 26, so 126 in this case, gives me the year and the date, but then we have a letter T separating the time. 127, that can give me a time zone. So the time zone would be at the end with a letter Z at the end. 130, this gives me the date and time in the Hijri. So this is an Islamic representation. So for instance, in the Western year 2025, we have the Islamic year 1446. And we have a similar thing for 131. So that's the major thing about convert. Firstly, we don't have the function, the expression, and then the word as, and then the data type. Instead, we have the data type first, and then a comma, and then what we are converting. But secondly, and quite importantly, we have this third optional argument, which is useful if you are converting date time into string. Now that you can also use it for when converting into float and real money and small money and XML and binary, but I've never actually used any of those in real life. It is converting into a string from a date time that I've used it. So that is the convert function. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button and why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.